This plenary room is empty right now. In about an hour's time, all the negotiators will be headed back from lunch, and this place will be full of people negotiating, discussing, uh, raising their opinions and their perspectives. There's a heightened sense of energy around the conference today. We had to stand in long lines just to get in this morning. The ministers and high-level figures within the political delegations are supposed to arrive here starting from tomorrow. That could make a big difference. Over the past week, we've seen mostly uh, technical details being sorted out by the bureaucrats here. Uh, once the political leaders arrive, there's hope that they may be able to come to some sort of breakthrough. They have the power to make decisions that some of the bureaucrats here just haven't. So we're going to keep an eye on that over the next few days and see if uh, they'll be able to make some breakthroughs on some of the major issues that have been holding these negotiations up for the last couple days and indeed for the last several years. So with Jim Lee from WWF, we just heard you say this process is too important to fail. Tell us what you meant by that. Well, ultimately, if we're going to get to the level of urgent and ambitious action we need to have to meet the challenge of climate change, countries need to have confidence that everybody is acting together. So we need an ambitious but also binding legal agreement. And we heard you talk about a lost decade. What did you mean by that? Well, we came into Durban having talked a lot about the importance of a post-2012 agreement. And now suddenly we see people talking about post-2020. The U.S. and others pushing for delaying the negotiation of an agreement or entry into force of an agreement till 2020. And that's a lost decade. I mean, that we simply cannot afford to wait to then to get to binding commitments for action. The International Energy Agency has told us we have at most five years to get on track um, and we're hearing here that there may not be an agreement before 2020. That's far too late. We cannot have another nine years of waiting because in the meantime, the damage will be done. The United States is being called on to either lead in these negotiations or get out of the way. Here in the plenary hall, we see the United States stands out with a white placard among a sea of black ones, signifying that it's one of the only countries of the world that has not ratified the Kyoto Protocol. So what's your message to the United States delegation? My message to the United States delegation is we need you to step up. We need the United States as the second largest emitter in the world and the highest per one of the highest per capita emitters in the world to show the leadership we expect from them in other sectors and find a way to be part of mounting a global solution to climate change. I mean, I speak about my four grandchildren who will be in their 50s in, uh, in their 40s in 2050, and I wonder what kind of world they will have, sharing it with probably about 9.2 billion. I'm less worried particularly about my, ch my grandchildren being Irish, they may not suffer so much. What about the imbalance in the world, the possibility of 200 million climate refugees, which we're, to we're told about? In other words, I hope that there will be a sense of urgency now that the political figures are coming.